YouTube. This is Suit Tycoon Steve, just hanging out here in your Pronghorn exhibit for another episode of uh, Planet Zoo Franchise Mode Let's Play Zoo. Well, what was that you saying? You don't remember me building a Pronghorn exhibit in the last episode? You think that I was kind of flexing around for a little bit and forgot to hit the record button and didn't realize until I was too late? Well, you're the one who was wrong, so don't worry about it. Um, but just in case you did forget, it was clear that's what happened. I didn't make a mistake and forgot. What was going on here is last time we divided our zoo into a couple of separate zones. Uh, we go ahead and repassed our zoo a little bit. So we have this front area here. Uh, we have now our African Path area. And of course, you remember from last time, we went through and changed some of our theme. For example, that front area that was just kind of the free glass, which is kind of boring for our warthogs and ostriches. We go ahead and wall that off. Um, we put a little group in here, so we can put maybe a very, very small exhibit, maybe even just something like we did with our iguanas. Uh, leave a comment in the comments below for what you'd like to see in there. Just a nice little simple exhibit for people who want to go straight from the zoo entrance. Uh, to the right, we've got our new expanded view area for the warthogs and ostriches. Uh, we started putting our speakers, educational speakers, on the roofs. That way, it's out of the guest view, but still can hit them all as the can see them. We'll go ahead and walk through this area, although you clearly remember it from the last episode. While I'm walking through here and showing you this area and the minor, minor changes we made, I'll let you know that what we're going to be doing this time is putting in an exhibit for our American bison. Um, we're going to do that on the opposite side. So this is the African area, and you can see, or you can remember, we didn't really do anything for our wild dogs last time because it was going on anyway. You find some recording it, it's going to but over here, on this side of the zoo, if you go to the right in the beginning, you'll pass through the return belt for our North American exhibits. And we will just fly through here. Of course, there's just the grizzly bear area. Uh, we did a little bit of re-theming. Uh, guests can see the top of the ostrich's head, so we determined they're not actually going to be able to look in there, so we were okay with it. It just makes them know that there's more in the zoo they need to go investigate. We're going to go right back here through our grizzly bear exhibit. Uh, remember that we built this statue in here, and the base of the statue is actually a planter that we dug into the ground. You'll also remember how we built up our bathroom and guest area to this nice little well, one two, three shelter. And we go ahead and put in a place for people to buy um, information, uh, information sets they need to buy from us. Or, uh, oh, sorry, information sets, that's actually uh, 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 souvenir, souvenir sets. And then, of course, if you go through this area, we kind of slightly change the grizzly bears uh, outside view here so you can see that a little bit better. And then we built in the punk exhibit, which took most of our time. And of course, you remember that all because I totally felt it. And uh, I've already put that up on our, uh, or on my YouTube channel's feed. So let's not worry about it. Um, just to show you what the punk ones look like and see they totally go. There you go! Nice little southwestern pronghorn antelope. Although they're not actually antelope, don't send the comments. Looks so cute! So they've got like four females and one male, I believe, uh, because they only went one male that's number. I guess I'll go through and walk you through the inside here on the end of the book, too. Remembering we've got this nice little pen area for him with some hay down. And then we've got both a uh, keeper's lounge and a animal storage area out there. And then we can take this exit outside. Remembering how we adjusted to put a gate here, and then there's actually some secret bolt fences going out that way. That way we can make like a little anti-chamber that doesn't interfere with the look of the building. And you see the back side of the building here, of course. That's where the gatekeepers are going to go in, but the uh, regular guests are not. Who broke my bench? Some B words. There she now I can still mark this again for the episode. Uh, but remembering what our plan was was as the pathway leads people through here, we want to have an area for the bison here, like where you're not looking at the pronghorns, then go ahead and build like a building for the bison and their keepers, and also have another bison area here. So it's going to be like separated into two areas. We're going to make a fairly large exhibit for them. Uh, and that is going to be most of the North American animals in this game. Uh, we, there are wolves, and I'm a little resonant to do them because I've already done the painted dogs, and I feel like that might be a little too similar. But if you really want the ones, uh, leave a comment in the comments below, and we'll make that a priority. Uh, but other than that, we'll go ahead and get into our um, American Bison exhibit now. So, an area here, a 
building kind of here. And the area here. Because I don't want guests, I'm not going to leave guests into this corner. I want them to kind of loop around and then we'll get a like, move the path out this way. Yeah. Yeah, that's the plan. So I want to um, also redesign this pathway to make the guests prompted to go see the promenores. So we're probably going to put in some signage for them too. Uh, to lead guests that way. In fact, we'll probably put it on the side of the bison building. Now that I'm thinking about it. Yes, okay. I know what I want to do. Let's go ahead and go into build mode, and I will see you on the other side. All right, it's building time. It's time to get to building. First thing I'm going to do is smooth this out. And now let's uh, go ahead. I'm going to build a little. I'm going to build a little building, I guess is the way to put this. Um, I'm going to do the same thing I've kind of been doing with the couple of uh, previous exhibits uh, that you've actually seen. Um, I'm going to go ahead and build around the zookeeper area. I'm going to make this part of an inside building. Then I'm going to put a uh, off exhibit display for them, and then I'm going to go and uh, put an on display on the other side. Do 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 do. Just kind of making a plain box, I think, and we'll do the thing where we uh, put the concrete wall on the inside and put the wooden wall like a faux outside. I think that's going to be pretty helpful. At least it gives it a good look. And that's what we're really going for right now. Give it the style. I'm going to make this little chamber here. So there's like an area exclusively for our zookeepers. And then, of course, the area where the bison will pass through. Kind of putting in a little faux wall here. Um, yeah, kind of like that. Let's go ahead and make this straight path for them to yeah, just like that. Okay. Now, where are we going to put you? Uh, I think right up against... Yeah, like right there. Angle to the path right up against it. So that when uh, our guests are walking by, they're going to see that nice, clean, straight wall that we can kind of decorate a little bit. We're also going to go ahead and build a viewing area for our bison here. Um, now, one thing I think I've been doing wrong with this game, or at least that I'm going to change going in the future, so I'm going to try to make it so that the pathways that are lining up against the fences or actually a raised pathway. And I'm going to do that just because it's um, it's actually what real zoos do. It gives it a little bit of a uh, better look. Uh, let you look in slightly better. What is the best way? I think the best way to do this is just to hold down the shift so I kind of raise the path just a teensy tiny bit like this. And then we'll go ahead and go off of this raised path. Um, I want to put a bend in it, so it's probably better not to put it on the grid go ahead and just kind of drag you across there and then we'll connect this back to the pathway we've got going through oh good it made the little 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 steps like I wanted it to um, those don't line up perfectly though hmm okay let's trim it a little bit and put in kind of side paths that are more like ramps yeah yeah okay I, I kind of like that so we'll actually have like three ways in, one on the right, one on the left, and some in the middle. And because of that, yeah, there we go. We can round it off like that. That's a good little viewing area. And we'll build up like uh, archways around it and stuff so that people know where they're going and uh, what they're doing and how much happy they're having. Uh, go ahead and put the fence in, put it right up against the path here. Uh, we're going to change this, obviously, to a glass fence so people can see through it. And then I think we'll put like a little faux fence along the bottom of the grass. Uh, but now I just kind of want an interesting shape. Don't want it to look too squaresy. And that'll do. We can use those areas to kind of cut in, drop some trees in the background. Uh, dropping the trees to kind of disguise the fact that that's the edge of the zoo. So we don't want that. We don't want people looking at that. Yeah, and that'll be our off exhibit area. Okay. Do we have power? We don't really have power there. Where are we going to put our power? Hmm. Well, we've got some convenient areas inside our building. Let's go ahead and put in a power generator. Um, in fact, we can put in a water generator here, too, I think. 
these two squares. Yes, just like that. Okay. Now that means we're going to have to put an actual path down for this area, but that shouldn't be too hard. We can go ahead and use the building as our grid and then just lay the path down on that grid. Uh, so let's get rid of the one that was auto-generated and we'll just build this out like so. And uh, we'll kind of come together like that. Perfect, perfect, great. I'm actually learning how to do this game and it's making me very happy. All right, let's go ahead and get this shifted over. I want that to be glass. Um, let me show you this portion. Let's go ahead and stretch it out. Just because I kind of want it to be balanced on both sides where the glass begins. So right there where the ramp curve ends. That's pretty good. And uh, we'll need to reconnect this pathway. Otherwise, no one can take care of our grizzly bear. So before I forget, we'll get that fixed. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I like that as a general concept. Um, can I make one big fat ramp, though? Looking for one big fat ramp. And what I can do is make two medium fat ramps, which is pretty good. Okay. Alright. Let's get this as close as possible. I've got to price this right, this as close as possible without going over. Yeah, there's just going to have to be a little bit of a gap there. We can play around with that. We can definitely play around with that. Uh, what else? What else do I need to do? Right now I'm just cutting the grass underneath it so it's not poking through by switching that to short grass. Lululu. Where are the good floors? Where's Becky with the good floors? <laughs> I'm going to find you! Is that a good floor? No, it's not quite what we're looking for. I want the ones that are actually marked floors, like these ones! Ha! Ah, laying down. Should just be able to lay that flat. And then again, we'll cut the grass. Here and here and here and here and here. Lulu. set up. Okay, where is this gate going to go? That's not going to make me a sad person. I think the trick is we actually want this to be wider. I think I was too clever by half, by um, like pre-sectioning off that gate. I think that's actually, yep, I'm exactly right. That's what's causing the issues. So just pro tip, if you're trying to put a gate in, don't pre-section it off. You're just going to cause more issues for yourself. There we go. Okay. Corrugated. That looks pretty good. Now I don't like the look of this, though. Um, let's go ahead and make this a work group. When I'm thinking over how I want to change the um, off viewing area. Now I can't use the same gateways I built for the pronghorns. That doesn't line up quite right. Oh, the fence disappeared here. Let's get that fixed. Okay. Don't want the fence to disappear. Um, how am I going to decorate this area? Let's start, start with the fence, because that's going to be the easiest. We'll go ahead and put these posts in. So those boring sort of like gray metal posts that comes with the fence. And then we'll put these little, um, they're not, they're, what they are, very small walls is what they really are. Go ahead and attach them like so. And then we'll line them up with ones that are coming out from the actual fence. Gonna have to play with it a little bit, but we should be able to get these in fairly easily because um, we're just literally lining up with the middle of the fence, so we've got a pretty good guideline for that. Shouldn't take too much tinkering. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
So far, so good. Uh, just gonna slide you in. Come on, don't fight me. And then get you to the right height. Come on. Yes, perfect. Just like that. Okay. So we've got a pretty good little viewing area fence. It's got the trim of the logs on the bottom. It's got the uh, the glass over which, and it's not too high. I don't think the buffaloes are going to try to jump. So we should be good. Um, I think I've decided. I'm going to throw these trees back here. But I think I've decided for that viewing area, I'm not going to make it an inside area. And mostly because I didn't do enough planning to make it a good inside area. So we're not going to do that. Uh, what we are going to do is kind of uh, like build up archways so that you do feel like you're in a zone, but we're not going to, um, where did I put the bisons? But we're not going, did I even get the bisons yet? I don't think I did. We're not going to, um, like, build walls all around it, so we'll leave, like, we'll leave those areas on either side where the ramps are, like, blank, and we'll fill them with, like, flowers or something, so it's, like, outside, inside. You'll see. You'll see. I'm not explaining it well, but hopefully it looks better than I am explaining it. Um, that's all we can hope for at this point. That's all we can hope for at this point. Ooh, Lou. Um, let's see. Is there anything special I need to know for my bison? Uh, oh, they use mud bass. That's good. And I could have put them with the pronghorns. But uh, you remember we had a long debate about that last episode when I totally remembered to record myself. Um, wish there were more. Having now committed to a uh, North American section of the zoo, totally wish there were more North American animals. First of all, where are the raccoons? Come on, give me a raccoon exhibit. You know I'm crazy for raccoons. Uh, which bisons are best? These guys are actually really cheap. I'm surprised they're this cheap in the game. I guess maybe they're not so popular. I'm not looking at their popularity ratings. That could be it. Although the grizzly bears, very popular. They're very popular. Like, if you were trying to just make a cash zoo, um, well, first of all, you would make just a breeding zoo, but if you wanted one that uh, was going to make you money and not just be a like bunch of breeding pens, then your best bet. Grizzly bears, very early on. Grizzly bears early on, and then, like, I think pandas in the way back. We're going to have to save one animal that's, like, really, really popular or way, way back in the zoo, so people are encouraged to walk all through the zoo so they can see their favorite animal. So, thanking pandas doesn't have to be. If you got an idea of exactly what it should be, uh, leave a comment in the comments below of what animal you want to save for, like, the peace day resistance at the uh, back of the zoo. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, now what do I want to do with the inside area? I'm going to make these faux pens by using these uh, fake gates. Uh, the gates, the uh, I know at least the zookeepers, I haven't seen the uh, animals walk through them yet, but I have seen zookeepers walk through them, so they're not going to cause any hitbox issues. But we can create uh, with these sort of metal railings. They look like the kind of thing you would put, like, like a carnival has for their lines, like you could put them up cheap. But they also do a pretty good job doubling as like an animal... Um, pen or animal cage because they're kind of utilitarian to the point where they seem like the things you would do if you had to uh, do it you weren't worried about how pretty it had to look all right and we'll keep one off the main track just so it looks like it's a gate swung open like this i mean it's not a hundred percent because it'll have the post down so it's clearly a fence but if you squint or don't pay enough attention it's going to be pretty good Drop some hay to encourage the animals to go to sleep in here. Don't want to put the food in here because I'm worried about the hitboxes and they need that. You can see it kind of. Well, maybe I can put the small ones. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to go ahead and finish making it look like there's an area that the uh, when the zookeepers come out of their lounge area where they've got or where the power and the water and everything is. They've kind of got an area where they're not immediately being, well, buffaloed by the buffaloes. Nailed it! Okay. Nailed it, nailed it. Um, let's get you lined up correctly. 
And you too, all right. Just make like big, like garage door exits for the uh, bison. There we go. Okay. Now let's turn our attention to how we snazzify this. And I want to use this buffalo statue. Because um, it's kind of cool looking. We're going to go ahead and change the color so it's sort of a buffalo brown. And then we're going to build a base for it um, by taking one of these flower boxes. I'm going to flip it upside down and sort of bury it. And that's going to give me a smooth wooden plank. There's probably easier ways to do that. But because I don't want it to be a perfect square like it would be if I was using the floor in the game, I'm going to go ahead and use that. Plus, these guys have that little lip you can see going around the edge. So as long as I, like, lean them into each other, I'll have a nice little lip for the statue of base. So, in theory, once I get these all configured related, perfect. And that's going to give it a nice, well, let's get the buffalo in the middle. Uh, do I need to put one more, or is it... No, I can just raise the buffalo a little bit, because I had that too far down. There, perfect. No, oh, it's a little off, actually. I said perfect like three times before it was perfect. But there we go. So now we got a base with a little lip for that statue, which is pretty good. Let's go ahead and I'm going to throw some free floating walls. Uh, and this, the walls, because I want to be able to put a sign up for them, just mark this as bison. But I also want to force the guests to go into the, um, into the viewing area instead of just like hanging out outside and not going up the ramps. So I want to block off the view from that so they're prompted to go in there. I'll just put these posts here. I really like these posts. I'm probably using them too much, but they're like, eh, I don't know what the word is. They're, I don't know, elegant? No, I guess I, I'm drawn to the simplistic look of them. However, you say that, but smart. Lululu. Gonna... Is an awning gonna work? Probably, probably not. The awnings in this game probably not gonna work. Okay, I saved you guys a lot of time there. There was a lot of... I put logs across those gaps and then took about, I don't know, 20 minutes with every log to get them. Oh, they're still not perfectly lined up. I was gonna say lined up correctly. Still not there. Let's go ahead and move you over just a smidge. Great. Okay. So we've got that going. Um, let me show you anything else that I might have uh, skipped over there. You can see I put up a buffalo signage up there. Uh, I made sure to put the railings on our ramped areas. I dropped the azalea bushes uh, into the blank areas, not realizing until I started putting the azalea bushes how uneven that was, but can't be helped at this point. I'm going to let it go. And you can see I also doubled up the fake, uh, the fake fencing we put down there just to kind of make sure it was flush against the um, railing where our guests are going to go. So that's kind of what we did off camera there. And trust me, it would have just been a lot of me saying, uh, no, nope, little left, nope, little right, nope, little left, nope, little right, little left, little right, little right. See, it's boring you already. Uh, let's go ahead and get our bison and put them in the exhibit so we can make sure that we're making happy bison exhibits. Um, let's see, why is it, it's kind of showing me all the bison, even though I thought I had that selected. These are my stored animals. I got a lot of stored tortoises. Uh, word to the wise, if you're going to do Alhambra tortoises, they're not that expensive. And when they breed, they breed like, well, reptiles. So they have huge clutches that take forever to mature. So I would actually recommend uh, going ahead and putting them on um, uh, contraception, like almost immediately, uh, because it's, it's just not worth the headache. It's so much of a headache. Trust me, it is a huge headache. <laughs> All right, but let's go ahead and get our bison, uh, bisony. There's no way of knowing. Okay. Fairly good. And why is it all mad at me? I have to see. 
good news is it is putting the buffaloes in so they didn't mess up and like cut off their pathways like I've done before okay then we'll just go ahead and pause here this isn't actually connected up let's go ahead and reset it so it uh, I'm gonna move it and then move it back just so it'll automatically connect to that path there we go same thing with this guy take you off for a second and then rotate you around la 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 okay reset and the pathway connects oh that's right I deleted their pathway so I could make it on the grid okay I remember what happened there yeah very good all right unfreeze let the bison roam oh give me a home for the bison do roam this song is not copyrighted so I can sing the whole song and YouTube can't stop me I can't think of a thing that rhymes with stop me all right um, so you can see they really do like the tall grasses obviously because they're from the Great Plains and oh, where is there a oh there's a tree inside there uh, let's just go ahead and get rid of that one don't need that one there so that's fine it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> fine. Okay. Alright, so let's go ahead now and focus on fixing the outside area. I do not like how it looks currently. So first we're going to tweak the fence a little bit. And because this isn't intended for guests to look in, I think I'm going to go for more like a um, basic geometric shape. And I'm going to try to use this area behind. Well, here, I don't want to move that. I'm going to try to use this area behind the uh, inside building so that we're using our space efficiently. Uh, in fact, now that I think about it, it probably would have been better to make the, um, to make the exit to the building on the... Uh, what side would that be? east side the east side so it's like exiting towards the back away from the guest path but that's fine that's uh that's a thing that smart people would do because smart people would pre-plan but anyway let's get this as uh squared up as we can get it squared up as we can get it like so it doesn't have to be perfect i guess I guess it doesn't have to be perfect. But you know what we can do? We've made this little cut-in area. Let's go ahead and build like a little building around it. Just to make it look like that's a more of a substantial structure. I like that idea a lot, actually. We'll go ahead and put in a little bend here that lines up right with the path. Yeah, that's good. That's real good. And we're going to make it taller, too. Even though it doesn't need to be taller, it's not functional in any way. We're going to do it that way just to give the building more character. Always for more character in my buildings. Um, in fact, let's go ahead, I'm going to make the main building multi-story as well. Anyway, we're gonna to switch to null fences and line them up with this guy. And that means we're gonna to have to tweak this slightly. Um, and tweak this slightly. Okay. Build this up to an even higher stary, uh, story. Stary? Story? I don't know what stary is. Okay, yeah, just build up around that. Great. Yeah, that's gonna have like three levels. Perfect. And now, we'll go ahead and put this roof in. Just putting in a simple concrete roof on top, or a corrugated roof, and then just above that we'll put in that dark wood from the North American pack that we've been using. Okay. Yes, yes, very good, very good.
very, very nice. Okay. Just putting in these faux windows here so when guests walk by, it'll look done. And we can put a nice little awning there. That one's going to work perfectly. It's actually storming up pretty good. And it really irks me that these doors don't quite 100% fit. Uh, what, what, what does one have to do to get a working door that fits perfectly? Come on. Come on, Zoo Dyke. Or, <laughs> come on, Planet Zoo. You can do better. I'm not upset. I'm disappointed. Okay, it's time to dress up the exhibit a little bit. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and put some... Sorry, I went silent there for a second. I was thinking, yes, let's go ahead and put some rocks against these back walls. Just to kind of make it look... I don't like the fact that those uh, plants are leaking out there. Let's just go ahead and make it look less, uh, less artificial. Even though I'm putting up artificial rocks. It's one of those life's little ironies, I guess. But we'll go ahead and use these to... Uh, trim up the main backdrop just to kind of give people that's uh, too samey there we go okay I think that's a pretty good pretty good use let's dress up this area too I'm gonna kind of make sure that people know that this is a zookeeper thing oh this poking into the grizzly bears we'll hide it under a bush so the grizzly bears won't have a problem either and just put this Stick across. Tweak, 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 tweak. This is what I was like putting up the logs. Got practice now, though, so hopefully I'll be better at it. Okay. And let's fill in this area. I don't want people looking back to where the guests are. So I'm going to go ahead, yeah. I'll go ahead and put in these elephant bushes, too. Yes, very good. Very, very good. Yes, I think that's, I think that's built. Alrighty here, let's go ahead and take a look through our new bison exhibit, and I'll even take a uh, stroll through the pronghorn exhibit that you all totally saw me build last episode. Um, so if you remember, of course, we're going to go right down this main pathway here. On the right-hand side is the outdoor viewing for our grizzles. Uh, I don't know if any are there, but people are crowding around. Oh, they're climbing down the structures, and there's one. the baby bears are hiding down under there. So that's actually a great view of the grizzly bears. Uh, of course, you'll remember on the other side, we've got like this little seating area and the whoop, zookeeper entrance to our... Well, controls are going kaflui. The zookeeper entrance to our pronghorn paddock. You can see one of our pronghorns over in this area. But what we're most interested in right now, of course, is our bison exhibit. So let's go ahead and head that way. Get up to like human height. And you can see we've got the main ramp to the side here, the two little ramps that we were building. Let's just go up this ramp. Do, 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 and look out at our... Oh, and you can see them there. There are our bison. As we speak, there is a bison taking a poo. Uh, very good. Well, there are more there, you just can't quite see them in the shelters. But let's go ahead and take a view. We've got that faux rock wall in the back. Nobody's up in the mud bath. I was really hoping that they would be up there for when we were viewing, but that's okay. Uh, let me show you the back side of our guest exhibit. You can see we've put in those azalea bushes there, and we've hung up some signage. Uh, we've also hidden a speaker up top here so that everyone's getting information about our uh, American bisons. And then I didn't bother to decorate this area yet because I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with it. But since it is pronghorn time, I might do that decoration off camera so I don't have to bore you people with it. Uh, let's go ahead and go down. And you can see the entrance to the pronghorn exhibit. Woo! Boy, the camera is really super sensitive. I must have bumped a button that changed the mouse. Um, we'll just walk in here through this little area. And you can see the signs are up. Jeepers! Flying through the bush. What is it, T that slows it down? No, T slows down that. No. 
Well, that's okay. It will give us time to appreciate the vast open grasslands we still have available to us in this zoo. As we continue to fly back. And now we are... Where are we? Ah, uh, there's the pronglings again. We'll just fly in. So you guys can kind of get a look at what's going on here. You can see that there's one sitting up there on top of the bell. Very good. Oh, I don't like how that... I haven't looked at that. The back panels of these TVs are just kind of exposed. So we've got... Um, We'll build a little something over there. In fact, what I'm probably going to do, maybe I'll do a, um, well, here, leave a comment in the comments below if you want to see me go back through and, like, kind of pretty up this area a little bit and maybe do a little bit of uh, prettying up throughout the zoo as a whole. Or if you'd rather me to do that off camera, just go ahead and leave a comment about that and we will have another exhibit the next time. In fact, if you have an animal that you want to do next time, uh, oh, I need to get some get some power going. So if you have an animal that you specifically want me to do next time, uh, leave a comment below. The only other North American animal that we really have are the timber wolves, and that's so close to what we would do for the African painted dogs um, that I feel like I don't want to do it so close together. So I'm probably not going to put it in the timber wolves next episode unless everyone really demands it in the comments. Um, but if you want to see the timber wolves, or if there's another animal that you really, really want to see, maybe you're not seeing anyone else do it, or Maybe you just want to get my take on it. Just leave a comment below, and um, I'll, at the end, I'll give it a week. At the end of the week, whatever animal has the most comments and thumbs ups for it, I will go ahead and make that habitat next. I'll turn over the next phase of the zoo to you, my loyal viewers. Um, so if you want to see that video, the best way to keep in track of it is to click that subscribe button and then click on the bell for the notification icons. And um, other than that, thank you for joining me today. This is Zoo Tycooner Steve saying goodbye.